The Wednesday Up Late podcast is made possible with help from Inspire 9. Located directly opposite Richmond train station, Inspire 9 is the best office space and co-working environment in Melbourne. And with cost-effective, flexible terms, it's the right solution for your business. Visit inspire9.com to take a virtual tour and see for yourself. Everybody, hi. Welcome. We are Glenn <laughs> and Chloe from Wednesday Up Late, and welcome to another one of our super fun, filled, packed, awesome, fantastic episodes. Woo! Huzzah! How are you, Glenn? <laughs> I'm doing great. Having a, having a good time already. <laughs> As we always are. <laughs> I apologise to the viewers and listeners <laughs> in advance because I have been sick, so I don't sound the best. So we're just going to start right off there. We should just both preface every episode with that, and it would just explain away everything. <laughs> It'd be our excuse for everything. Yeah, right. Just really sick. Oh, for goodness sake! Sick. I'm I'm drinking a concoction which um I discovered this week. It is a tea, oh. and it is jam and toast flavored tea. I need to ask you about this because yeah. you sent me a picture and you yeah. said, don't say ill, but <laughs> because most of the things you send me, I say ill to. Yes. I don't understand. Neither do I. So what I don't understand, which I'll get to in a minute, it is the, it's, <laughs> it's so uncanny how much it tastes like jam and toast, right? I can wow. understand how you'd get uh, raspberry flavor into a tea. I don't understand how you get toast flavor because the toast profile is really strong. It is. Wow. It, it feels like you're drinking breakfast, and the hint to it is to like put just a little bit of sugar in if you don't normally, just to get the sweetness of the jam, mm-hmm. and a little bit of milk, uh, like eye drop of milk. Um, oh, it's delicious. I love it. I've had heaps this week. But where did yeah, you get this from? Just like the, where? Like the supermarkets. It's, it's a um, Yorkshire tea. You know they do the Yorkshire teas. Yeah. It's one of their blends. They've got a different one as well that I don't remember. But that one just sort of the curiosity was just too strong. So yeah. ja- jam and toast tea, everybody. And as Chloe wow. knows, I drink shit tons of tea. It's my drink of choice. And um, I do, I like at the moment, like every third cup is this one. And then you also like to try things that don't sound like they should be a thing. Yeah, I love so trying different things. It's, yeah. it's your thing to try things that shouldn't be things, but are things. <laughs> and that never usually you know works I mean? out well. <laughs> never. <laughs> this one does. There you go. We've got a win. Yep. We've got a win. There we go. Now, before and... I forget, yep. I would like to direct people to our socials okay, <laughs> so awesome. they can <laughs> like and follow, subscribe, check out our videos, um, head over to the Good Movie Monday um, socials or goodmoviemonday.com preferably. Um, there's a little up late tab there that you can look at and click on the links and you'll find us. So go do that. And if you're if you're new to this, this is your first time watching us, uh, Good Movie Monday is the flagship sort of mother show that this is a spin-off from. So that explains why it's goodmoviemonday.com, just in case people wonder, what? What am I watching? Like, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's so <laughs> much more you don't know, guys. You can go deep. <laughs> deep. Deep. <laughs> Lots of celebrity deep. guests. Oh, deep. I know. It's good fun. Some um, rippers on there. Can we circle back to last week for a moment? Absolutely. Did we did we point break it? <gasps> we half point break it. Ah, oh, is there such a thing? So I started watching it on Sunday while yeah. I was folding the washing and I had to stop it for some reason and then the children played with the television while I was out of the room and when I went to go put it back on, I couldn't get, like, the sound wouldn't marry up and it's like the sound started from the start of the ah. movie and I was still halfway through and it just, it wasn't. the That the, is an unfortunate story. Yeah, it's really frustrating. So I haven't finished it yet. Were you enjoying what you saw? I was thoroughly enjoying what I saw. Um, Laurie Petty, smoke show. Oh, my God, she's stunning. Those eyes, like, please. But what I do have to say about it thus far Mm. is that it's got one of my favourite chase scenes I think I've ever watched. Is this with and the the, master, the presidents or like? Yeah, yeah. With the one president, or they're chasing him in the car, and then he gets out to set it on fire or whatever mm. he's doing, and then they run, and he and Keanu's chasing him. 
her, him. I don't know who it is yet, but yeah. um, it's it's probably one of my favorite chase scenes that I have watched in a really long time for the sole reason of it's simple. Yeah, it is simple. It is shot really well, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and I just really, really enjoyed it because you felt like you were there in the chase with them, but there was no fucking explosions going on, bullets flying here, there. It was just a simple chase. I ten I, out of ten for that I, chase scene. Yeah, I think you've you've nailed the movie in general. Like that's sort of the spirit of the movie is it's a very simple yeah. movie, but it's um it it's loaded with action, not necessarily as you said, shoot 'em up explosions. Um, good old fashioned filmmaking. The best part of all, it's directed by Catherine um Bigelow. Um, who's oh. like one of one of the great female directors of all time, but she's also one of the great action directors of all time. And when that movie came out, there weren't there weren't many of them, and there still aren't. Let's face it. So the fact that you know she was kicking Hollywood ass with big action movies that were blockbusters is incredible. But what do you reckon about um about Keanu? Because you mentioned last week in Speed was the first time you sort of saw him more of a sex symbol. Yeah, and then that's what led us to this this film. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> particularly with the wet hair when he comes out of the surf. Ooh. <laughs> What about Gary Busey? <laughs> well, you know what, right? Now I'm not I'm not saying that Gary Busey is like, oh, for me, right? But <laughs> Bucky's funny. He's yeah. really funny. He, I don't he, think I've seen many, if any, Gary Busey movies, but he, yeah. I really, really enjoy watching him. You go back to mid-90s and then go backwards, and everything he did was quality. He was like next. You know, this far away from being like a lister, like he was yeah. in a lot of things. Lethal Weapon, he's in that. Like he was in so mm-hmm. many good things and, and he was quite usually very funny. And that's before he had his accident. So he was like not demented. You know what sure. I mean? Yeah. Sure. I think now, I still yeah. enjoy him, even though he is a little bit demented. Now he's crazy. It's fun. Like, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, And speaking of action films. Yeah. I also went back and watched the original Roadhouse because it's finally fucking available for streaming now that the new one has that's come right out. that's right well okay, i have let's, oh let's i it. have been like chomping at the bit to watch the original <laughs> roadhouse chomping at the bit did not disappoint oh. not even slightly did it disappoint yeah it's all that un- and more like it is so good oh. like everything like about it from just the plain basics of him being a like a bouncer at a roadhouse like that's all cool stuff but then as it develops, you know, and they come for him and then he goes to the bad guy's house and like just everything about it flows so perfectly. It's like a real nice slice of the eighties. The ben will love you for this. Like it's his go-to action movie. It's like, it's gone up there for yeah. me. Yeah, It's like, I already want to go back and watch it again. Yeah. Um, I forgot how many tits get out in like eighties movies as well. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. It's yeah. fine. I'm I'm good with tits. <laughs> yeah. And I know Benjamin Boobs is too, and that's probably <laughs> why it's up there in his in his favorite movies, but it's Sam Elliott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? Well he's he's always been a hunk of a man. I've really only known him as the mustachioed, white haired. Yeah. But like even then, I was yeah. like, he no, could get you go, some. You go back to when he had the salt and pepper hair, then oh. he had the, the brown hair before that. Oh. And yeah, absolutely. He's kind of always had the mustache. He takes it off occasionally, but that's always sort of been a mm. trademark. He's been in some amazing films over the years. Yeah, he's. Yeah. Oh, anyway, I was blown a, away. We have a visitor. We have a visitor. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello, derpa derpa. Derpa derpa. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so, and I think you and I both watched the new Roadhouse as well, so. Yeah, we did. And look, I just enjoyed the shit out of it. It's, it's a, it's a very flawed film. It's got lots of shit you can pick apart. Ben and I talked about this on, I did. Good, Movie, on good Movie Monday, right? And I mean, we both enjoyed it, right? But as we're talking about it, we did what I hate to do and we started dissecting it and, and there's just so much that's bad about it. But in the moment when I'm watching it, I'm fucking loving every moment. I don't care how bad it gets. I'm just really enjoying watching a no-brainer fucking dumbass action movie. I love the bar. I love the location. I loved, I mean, I, I didn't like the the villain being the son of a bad guy, as Ben said on the show. Why can't it just be a bad guy? Like, it's always mm-hmm. a son. Like, it's, it's bullshit. Um, but you know what? I liked it. There's a lot of subplots that don't go anywhere, but who cares? I, I, the thing that I didn't like about it, and I can't really pick something that I really liked about it. Okay. I just, I, I want to, but I just yeah. can't. 
the thing I sort of disliked the most was that Conor McGregor's character was just so random. Well, he was the he worst was, thing about it. it. Like, I really, I I don't know why they chased him so hard for this movie. And I, I get it was his first movie. I get it. He was a draw card. He was a draw card. That's what it was. I, and- yeah. Yeah. It was it was for the views. I think that's what like, well, that's what I said on the on the podcast on, on Good Movie Monday. I said that if I had to say one thing I hated about the movie, it was Conor McGregor. I thought he was awful in it. His character was dumb. Um, he can't act to save himself. And you know, and you got someone like Jake Gyllenhaal who is fucking good and does the Dalton really well. I thought. Um, yeah. So look, I I still loved it. Like I'll watch it again in a heartbeat. Um, I was a little bit, it was a bit weird though. The action itself, like the impacts, were kind of sped up. So whenever a fist yeah. hits a face, you can see it's augmented. That yeah. bothered me a little bit. I don't think that was necessary, but whatever. It's a, it, nobody that's watching it is really paying for it. It's a part of a subscription on Amazon well, Prime. Well, that's it. And so, if you're looking for something where there's a lot of punching, yeah, this is your movie. Yeah, it totally. really is. It's this relentless. is your movie. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Absolutely. There we go. There we go. Awesome. There you go. We're all caught up on everything on, <laughs> on Chloe's watch list this yeah. week. I'm doing well this year, I think. You, with... I think you are. Yeah. I hope I keep up the momentum. But, I do have know. another I have another one to, for you to add to your list, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Okay. Let's let's um <laughs> let's move on and then all we'll right. go we'll go we'll circle back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right. What I want you to do is I would love for you just randomly, Mm -hmm. (laughs) to name a movie where the bad guy wins. A movie where the bad guy wins. Fuck, that's a hard one. Shit, okay. Oh. Oh. Um, seven. Spoiler (laughs) alert. That was the first one in my (laughs) brain too. (laughs) Such a good movie. Do you know I quote that quite a lot? Um. I'll like someone will go, oh, what's in the box? And I'll go, what's in the bugs? What's in the bugs? And everyone looks at me like I'm the psycho. I'm like, no, no, no. that's just, I, look, you're one of my best friends, but that's lame. Like, that's such a dumb joke. Like, that's such a dumb joke. <laughs> I do it it's a great joke. <laughs> Thank you um, very much. David Fincher has just put together a new, not a new cut of seven, but he's like, um, done like a remaster or something for IMAX. So seven's Ooh. coming back to IMAX, which will be interesting. I'd love to see it on the big screen again. I snuck into the cinemas awesome. when I was like 16 to see that. Wow. I don't even remember the first time I saw that, but I watched it for Brad Pitt and I ended up just freaking loving that movie. And the thing about me is right. I'll watch a movie and it'll make me think of somebody like in my family and not for like bad reasons, obviously, but like, oh, they would really enjoy this. So I texted my dad. I'm like, oh, seven, you need to watch seven. Mm. And he goes, Chloe, my dog's name is seven. Why do you think I named him seven? I'm just like, oh. oh." I also feel like seven's not the kind of movie you should tell someone to watch because everyone's seen it. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Sorry, guys. Uh, Late to the party. Let's go fuck myself, shall I? (laughs) Okay, all right. Only if the camera's on. (laughs) Only for paying. For the views. (laughs) All right. Well then, now we're playing. We're playing that game. Um, I want you to name a movie with flashlights. Flashlights. Yeah, torches. Oh. There's a very. There's a very simple go-to answer for this one. Like ET. Yeah. 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 Cool. You could yeah, have said seven. I was thinking Goonies for some reason, like when they're crawling over the hill, but I don't think they had the fla- they didn't have flashlights right. in their hands. I don't so know yeah. If I've got something I can use for an example. Um here we go. I'll use a text. So what's the difference between like an adventure film and a thriller film? What's the difference? Yeah. I'll tell you. Um, it's the torches. It's the flashlights. Because if you're in an adventure film, it's like you're looking for stuff like that. And if it's a thriller. Oh, looking like that. Interesting. Okay, I'm going to keep my eye open for that. Keeping in the sake of the conversation, can you name me a movie that had a plot twist that literally caught you by surprise? Like you, even you, didn't see that coming. Seven. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> Be creative. <laughs> well, I mean, Dick. then I could, okay, I could go the usual suspects. There's one of the great okay. twists of all time. Um, oh, 
the crying game. Okay. Yep. And I'm, I think uh, I've seen that one. I'm not going to. It's been 30 years. So, no, don't movie... spoil it. I'm going to put it on my list. I'm going to okay. put it on my list. It's a movie that came along and it said when you went to the cinemas to see it before the movie started, it says, please keep the secrets to yourself after seeing this. Ooh. You know, respect okay. future audiences that you know haven't had Who's a chance. Who's in that? Uh, Forrest Whitaker, uh, Stephen Ray. It's Neil Jordan, the guy that directed. Oh, um... that's why it sounds familiar. I saw it when I was scrolling the other day. Oh, okay, cool. It's an IRA. About, it's an IRA kind of film, but not like it's. Okay. Yeah, it's very film. Oh, he doesn't well. do an Irish accent, does he? Who? Forrest. No, no, I don't think he does. But Stephen okay. Ray definitely does. Okay. Right. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. okay. So, mm. is it your turn or my turn? Uh, yours. Okay. Told you I'm having brain fog. What, what, what was that plot last twist. one? What was that like? Plot twist. Fucking hell. Plot twist. <laughs> Glenn, Glenn doesn't remember shit. <laughs> Listen to episode, uh, the last three episodes of Good Movie Monday, and that will explain why I don't remember shit. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. So I want you to um, name a movie that has a helicopter in it. Um, Predator. Mm-hmm. Get to the job. Is that what the first thing that came to your mind was that quote? Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. We've had this discussion too, and it is from Predator, so don't yes. even try. <laughs> I remember that. I was right. Because <laughs> <laughs> I kept trying to convince you it was Running Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, I'm pretty sure I'm right about this, which doesn't happen very often with us. So. <laughs> awesome. Can is you okay, cool. Name me a movie that has a moose in it. Yeah. Welcome to Mooseport. Cool. Uh, which is <laughs> that's an actual movie. Ray Romano, and it was um, Gene Hackman's last movie. It's a oh it's wow, a, it's a comedy um, about a president, like a retired president that's in his twilight, which is Gene Hackman, that decides to run as mayor for a small town, like a mm-hmm. small, small community town that he lives in, and he's going up against the local guy that probably deserves it more and doesn't okay. get the attention and the press, and it's just the the clash of. You know, nice. big guy, small guy. It's it's a fun movie. It's nothing to write home about, but it is yeah. Gene Hackman's last movie. So, okay, yeah. But I mean, Jesus, Moose. There's a lot of movies with Moose, and they just pre- pretty much all take place in uh, Alaska or Alaska or Canada. Like, yeah, but only specifically um, Western Canada, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Interesting. I don't know much about Moose to be honest to know where they <laughs> reside. So, <laughs> okay. Rocky Mountains, that kind of thing. Okay. Yep. Yep. Elk as well. West? Elk as well. Yeah. Oh, that's Canada. Don't worry. It's fine. No, ro- Let's move ro- on. Rocky, Rocky Mountains is America and Canada. It goes right through the border. Oh, does it? Oh, yep. okay. Cool. So Colorado has the American Rocky Mountains, and then you go oh. up through Banff and Jasper and the Canadian Rocky Mountains. My aunt lives in Denver. I should know that. Yeah, probably. You know. <laughs> Sorry, Pip. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, I want you to name a movie that has. Asian takeaway food in it. <laughs> I, I, I reckon I know where you're going to go. Dude, where's my car, man? Oh, okay, cool. That's not where I thought you'd go. <laughs> no? Okay. Uh, I thought you'd go Big Daddy. Oh, no. I was going Rob, Rob Schneider plays the delivery guy. Oh, of course. <laughs> no, I was thinking when he's in the drive-thru. It's one of my favorite yeah. scenes. And then. And then. <laughs> I still find it funny. It's it hilarious. Is. It is. It's a fantastic double feature with Harold and, and it's, Hitler. And it's got um, it's got um Jerry O'Connell and his brother. I can't remember his brother's name. His twin brother. Anyway, it's got Jerry O'Connell <laughs> and his brother in it. It's really good. Um, tell me, yeah, can you name me a movie that stars like an action star, but it's a rom com? Yes, I can. So I would say rom-com. Okay, so I would say maybe Junior. Of course. Oh, yeah. Is that... yeah, okay. Yeah, it is because he falls in love with Emma Thompson. Yeah, um, yeah. okay. I could, I mean, they've all kind of done rom-coms, I think still all comedies, I should say, because Stallone did Stop or My Mum Will Shoot, although that's not really rom-com. Oscar, so there's a subplot, a romantic subplot, but um, we'll just stick with Junior. Nice. I like did it. Any, did any come to your yeah. mind when you were thinking about it? Um, no. <laughs> you were hoping <laughs> I'd have something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, then um, name a movie that's got a speedboat. 
Roadhouse. <laughs> yeah. The we new really one. Should, the new we really one. should call that conversation more of a um, first movie you think of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Roadhouse. Cool. I like playing games like that. Roadhouse, that's a good answer. I kind of, my brain went for stuff like um, Striking Distance with Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis would have been a great one for rom-coms. Oh, Bruce Willis would have been a good one. Yep. Um, and Police Academy 3, all speedboats, good fun. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Things like that don't stick in my brain very easily. And you so didn't say I... BMX bandits, speedboats. Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a good movie. Yeah. So good. Oh, so good. shit. And what did you think of the news that um, Happy Gilmore 2 is on its way? Potentially. Look, you sent me this article and I'm still trying to pretend like it's not a thing. Well, it's inevitable. Um, it's inevitable. Mm. Um, Like... Adam Sandler has this massive deal with Netflix. He's churning out movie after movie. Even the bad ones are fun ones. The good ones are great ones. And it was only a matter of time before they said, hey, give us Let's a bring it back. Yeah, that's right. And everything is right now, Roadhouse, you know, is proof uh, in point there that legacy sequels are hot, you know. Ghostbusters yeah. is another one. Like legacy sequels, everyone's after them and wanting them. Happy Gilmore 2 has potential if, you know, Shooter McGavin and Happy Gilmore are on the the senior circuit, you know, mm -hmm. potential. They, I mean, it kind of makes sense because um, if you've been on TikTok sort of any sort of recently, you've seen them have TikTok battles back and forth yeah. as their characters. Yeah. So we really should have seen it coming, yeah. to be completely honest with you. And look, I think I'll be okay with it if it's equally as funny. Yeah. Like the, the plot doesn't even need to be fine, like mm -hmm. that great for me. As long as it makes me laugh the way that Happy Gilmore makes me laugh, yeah, I think well, I'll be. I mean, okay. I think it, I think fans have to accept that Happy Gilmore exists and is as funny as it is. So this one's it's it's not going to be the same movie as the first one, right? But no, it's not going to take away from the first one. We've still got that to go back to, right? But I also think there's integrity when it comes to Adam Sandler. He might make some shit movies, right? But when it comes to stuff like Billy Madison, Happy Gilmore, his company is called Happy Madison. Mm -hmm. These are things he's very, very protective about, right? He's not going to shit all over his own legacy. So I do think that he wouldn't agree to this one unless he, you know, he writes it um, or agrees on a script that is, you know, worth doing. Happy with, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. It does give me a little bit more hope yeah, in, I mean, when you put it in that sort of perspective. There's a lot of so. comedy. There was still a lot of comedy to be had with the first one. Like, that could have gone so much harder. So I reckon, sure. I reckon let's give it a shot. Okay. All right. <laughs> Interesting. Um, mm -hmm. What I want you to do right now, what All I'm going right. to do is I'm going to throw out mm. an actor. What I would like you to do is tell me the first movie that pops into your brain yep. that this actor has been in. So, okay. that, like what you recognize yep. and then like, do you love the movie? Do you hate oh, the movie? Just relate like, it to something. Do you have something that reminds you of that yep. movie? Just, re you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm going to shoot one out at you Connect and let's it. see yep. how we go. All right. John C. McGinley. Well, that's John C. McGinley's office space comes to mind first. <laughs> yeah. Um, and simply because, I mean, some will say Scrubs is the best thing he's ever done. I think that Office Space is the best thing he's ever done. Um, the smile, I think it's the smile that I, you know, mm -hmm. like this, and every time he smiles, it squeaks. Like, <laughs> I didn't notice yeah, that. Yeah. Um, the, the short, like the, the, the shirt that's two sizes too small for him, mm -hmm. uh, the dumb questions about Michael Bolton. Um, and that's, that's the moment that I, like, I mean, other people were probably savvy to it before I was, but that's the moment I realized this guy is a comical genius mm -hmm. because I have seen him only in straight parts, you know, always a, a, a side player. Um, but this is the first time I'm like, Jesus, this guy's fucking funny. And after this, the comedies kept rolling. Like, I just think he's, I, I think he's like, he's flown under the radar with how good he actually is. Like he yeah. is insanely talented yeah. and like he hasn't shot to that A-lister, but you also know no, you don't want who he is. Yeah. He's made memorable things. He's fucking hilarious and he's good at what he does. Yeah. To many people, he's still just that guy that's in a lot of things. Like, you know, you'd be mm -hmm. surprised how many people don't know his name, but those that are in film circles definitely do. Good one. Yeah. All right. Well, what about yeah. you? Um, Toby Maguire. How would you relate that? Oh, I have to go straight to the first Spider-Man oh, because, <laughs> well, that's probably the first time I ever sort of mm. knew of Tobey Maguire and that was sort of my my era of Spider-Man that came out. That's, and I mean, that 
the first two of that series are the two best act, uh, superhero movies, in my opinion. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, yeah. He he is Spider-Man mm-hmm. to me. Yeah. Um, and I was already a Spider-Man fan um, growing up. I don't know how I became mm. that way, but he like it's always just been my favourite character. And when he sort of brought that to life and um, – I don't know. I just, I really enjoyed watching him do it. He brought a little bit of humor. He had, you know, this really expressive face. And I just, I loved you watching know what? Like, him in those movies. The, the Marvel Cinematic Universe really ruined superhero movies for me. Like they just killed it for me because I loved Spider-Man 1 and 2. And at the time they came out, it was like, fuck yeah, it's about time we had another decent superhero movie. It felt like the first big one since Superman. Like I know yeah. there had been some in between, but it felt like the the first big event superhero movie and I fucking loved it number two is even better I still I'm, I'm on the record saying number two is pro- possibly the greatest superhero movie of all time like I just think it's a perfect movie and um, I loved I was in the cinema I remember being in the cinema and watching him do the whole fly web yeah, fly yeah. thing and it just it killed me yeah. I don't know why but the way he was doing it like and using his hands mm. just and I was me. excited that little because, bit of humor yeah in that sort of universe just, I love it. And that is entirely owed to the fact that Sam Raimi, the director, and I had been a Sam Raimi fan because of all the Evil Dead movies. That's where I knew him from. And so mm-hmm. the fact he was doing this was very exciting. He tried to do it many years ago and it fell through. And that's why he made the movie Dark Man, which is another uh, sort of superhero movie that he created himself. It's not based on a comic book. He couldn't get Spider-Man off the ground, so he made his own. And that then got him sort of the job for Spider-Man. Yeah, so, nice. Yeah, nice. story. Love it. Very nice. All right. What about Eddie Murphy? Oh, it's just it's so lame to say Beverly Hills Cop. It's not lame. Um, but that look, that is the first proper exposure I had to him as a kid. I would um go around to my grandparents' house and they had a little you know, grandparents have that little sort of it's like a TV cabinet with sliding wooden drawer uh-huh. cupboards. Yeah. And in that they had a lot of VHS, but they were all taped off the television. And they were mostly things like careful he might hear you or east of eden like stuff that you know kids don't want to watch but then there was one that just was beverly hills cop and i thrashed that video every time i was at my nana's house i would play it and watch it (gasps) banana in the tailpipe like all these (laughs) gags that were in there just stuck with me and that forever was eddie murphy to me and Mm -hmm. after that obviously i'd as i grow up i discover um obviously delirious and raw but 48 hours the Golden Child, like this whole, this whole rift of '80s movies that he did, some better than others, but I loved it. So that's why I was really disappointed, as a lot of fans were, when he went down this whole family-friendly route. And mm-hmm. I get that it was all like you know, it was all cash grab, and he was making a lot of money off it. Why wouldn't you? But yeah, he'd lost touch with himself. He lost touch with the Eddie Murphy that makes him Eddie Murphy, if that makes any sense. So. I am personally very excited for Beverly Hills Cop 4, which is coming out later this year. The trailer looks fun. Um, and I'm very keen to see him back in that kind of character. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so that was very a nice. really long ramble. No, I like it. <laughs> I love it. I love Eddie Murphy. So yeah, I could I could listen to it all day. And the the other memory I have of him, other than um Beverly Hills Cop, is in The Golden Child, the only thing that stuck with me, like I love the film, but the only thing that stuck with me was when he puts a spoon into the porridge and the blood comes up. Oh, as yes. A, as a I kid, remember that. That freaked me out as a kid, but yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't take my eyes off it either. Like I'd always go back to that scene where he's like. Do you yeah. know, I've always had that scene in my brain and I could never place where it yeah. was from. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah. Now I know. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. So relate to me a movie with Kevin Costner. Oh, I can see him with long hair. Oh. Or is this Liam Neeson? I I think it's Liam Neeson. I don't remember Kevin Costa with long hair. And he like, it's, oh, it's yes, a dragon no. movie. Oh, no, it's not. Dragonheart? No, that's that's um Dennis Quaid. Oh, Dennis Quaid. But he there is a movie he had long hair, but I'm not going to give it away yet. Kevin Costner. Oh. <laughs> Is it bad that nothing comes to mind? <laughs> yeah, um, I would have thought Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves might have come to your mind. Yeah, that wasn't on my rotation as much okay. as I would like to admit that it was. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to well, give yeah. you another one. Okay, well, right. uh, well, Let's go with Liam Neeson. <laughs> oh, for me, Liam Neeson. Yeah. Um, 
Well, I mean, my instinct is to go back to a movie called The Mission that he was in with Robert De Niro back in the 80s um, by Roland Joffe. It's a fantastic pilgrimage, sort of a religious pilgrimage movie set in like the 1400s where these um, Christians trek into like the jungles of Peru or something like that to spread the word of God and build a mission. Um, Wow. Great film. Um, Really great film. Um, but then he was around that era, he was in The Bounty with Mel Gibson and Anthony Hopkins, which is a magnificent um, sort of high seas adventure movie. The true story of The Bounty um, and the mutiny. Um, Liam Neeson. I don't want to flash forward to the take-ins and all that because that's just, it's not the Liam Neeson I remember. As so a, that's kind of the Liam Neeson that I know, yeah. but then I have to admit that I've never actually seen a take-in movie. Oh, that's so, okay. That's okay. Yeah. The first Taken, I think you'll love because it really does set a new standard for action movies. And then the mm-hmm. sequels are just more of the same, which are okay. fun if you enjoy them, worth pursuing. But the first one, it's great. Um, and it, it turned him into an action star. After that, everything he's done is action. And they've action, been fun. Yeah. They've been fun. Yeah. He recently just shot a, a film like Kilometers from Our House, you know, um, <gasps> Ice Road Whoa. 2 in Walhalla. And um, yeah, fun stuff. Cool. What about Zac Efron? Oh. So, disgustingly, the first thing that comes to mind is obviously High School Musical. Yeah. <laughs> because Troy Bolton is everything. Right. Um, but I want to go with the wedding one he did with Adam Devine yeah. because I don't think I've ever seen him that funny. And to know that he's a good actor and he's good looking and he, he's funny – and he can sing and he can dance. Like, it's What's everything. What's that called again? Mike and... um. Oh, Mike and Dave need wedding guests need dates or, something. or something. Yeah, need yeah. a date, yeah. I don't mind that movie. I, yeah. I actually don't mind it. Um, But, yeah, he fucking kills me in that movie. Love it. Our, our walk-in movie encyclopedia mate Jarrett from Good Movie Monday was in Hawaii a while back and he... Loves that movie too. So he went to one of the locations that was filmed. Oh, and, nice. And took photos of himself there. Um, yeah, good stuff. Okay, that's an unexpected answer. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, um, cool. What about Drew Barrymore? Um. <laughs> what about <laughs> Drew Barrymore? Uh, well, Brain just instantly goes to Cat's Eye, which is a movie she did in like 1985 based on Stephen King stories. Yeah. Um, but it's not like, I, I I can't relate it to any memory other than as a kid I liked it. But obviously you got E.T. That was in, influential. First movie Wasn't I... Wasn't Firestarter a Stephen King yep. novel? Oh, so she's yep. done a few. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, And E.T. is the first film I ever saw at the cinemas. So I think that's an important one. Um, but Poison Ivy, there we go. So Poison Ivy was the movie she did with um, Sarah Gilbert, who you know does that show The Talk and she's on... Roseanne and all that. Oh, yep. Yep. Um, she did a movie with her in like 1992 when I think she was like 17, 18, maybe, maybe even early twenties. I think she was around that age. And it was one of those classic nineties, softcore erotic thrillers. Oh, okay. And she sort of played the bad girl in town that sort of, um, that, that influences the good girl. Um, is it kind of cruel intentions type of thing? kind of that was sort of the tail end of the 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 craze if you will yeah but there were movies like Zelman King was big in those days he's the a director and sort of um writer of these things uh, Two Moon Junction was another one Michelle and Fenn she got a, they all get their tits out um but it was all softcore erotica um that you could find in a video store it wasn't pornography you had big actors in them but um they were salacious and they were sexy and Poison Ivy has spawned a, a franchise. There's like four or five of them. Wow. She's only in the first one, but yeah. And each each other sequel has another Drew Barrymore type. So you've got Alyssa Milano in part two. Mm-hmm. I think Jamie King is in part three and so on. So yep. there we go. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. And that was sort of around the bad girl phase for Drew Barrymore when she was Hollywood's bad girl. Yeah. 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 I loved her even still. Yeah. <laughs> I've always loved her. I can't, um, I can't help it. Oh, she's great. What about Natalie Portman? Oh. I don't know if, like, this is, like, the 
But this is definitely not the first movie I ever watched with Natalie Portman in it. But the one that comes to mind that I actually really enjoyed is called No Strings Attached. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's got Greta Gerwig, like, has a small role in it, Mindy Kaling and mm-hmm. um, Ashton Kutcher. I really enjoyed her in that role. She was a feisty doctor and um, with That's Ashton Kutcher's a classic, goofiness. Um, it was just... A classic Hollywood copycat movie. So, you know, how Hollywood yeah, copies... Because- there was yeah. two that came out at the same time, one with Friends Justin with Timberlake. Yeah. Yeah. Which I also really enjoy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I really like that movie. That's but right. yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, awesome. I just um yeah, I really like her in that movie. Yeah, you you're pulling out some unexpected answers. I'm I'm enjoying this. Basic bitch answers, but yeah. yeah. I um, like them. For, for me, my my two favorite Natalie Portman movies, and I actually think are her two best performances were two of her first ones, Leon, uh, the mm-hmm. professional. With Jean Reno and Gary Oldman, I still think you should see that film. It's just glorious. Um, uh, very on the nose for today's standards when you look at the, the relationship between a 12 year old girl and a sort of 40 year old man, but it's so good. And then she made uh, another one called Beautiful Girls, which I know you will love. Uma Thurman, uh, Rosie Ooh. O'Donnell, Timothy Hutton, um, Max Perlich, Michael Rappaport. It's such an amazing cast. Lauren Holly. Matt Dillon, um, it's just the best. And it is essentially a reunion movie. All these high school friends catch up sort of 15 years after high school. Something brings one of them back to town and they all get together for the first time. And old old rivalries and conflicts from high school come back. And nice. it's dramatic. That does sound like it's something that I would like. <laughs> it's dramatic. It's very funny. It's heartbreaking. It's it's so good. And Natalie Portman plays the young sort of 12, 13-year-old neighbor to this guy that's come home. Okay. And she gets a big crush on him. And he knows she's got a crush, but doesn't want to break her heart either. Yeah, so he kind of okay. goes along with it on a safe in a safe way. But he knows that this is going to end in her being heartbroken and he can't yeah. avoid it. And it's just it's such a touching movie. I love it. Nice. I I still, I will stand to this day that it's not a movie, but Natalie Portman's um, rap skit on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yeah. If you have everyone at home, if you have not seen it, YouTube it. It's literally the best thing on the internet. She's a bad bitch. It is just it's a wonderful piece of film. Go on, go and see that. <laughs> awesome. Um, yeah. So I that, that's kind of an unofficial um, try to watch that as soon as you can so we can talk about it. Beautiful girls. Like, so good. It's written down. Ah, uh, excellent. But All right. <laughs> are, we, are we done with that conversation? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So the other one I want you to watch, hopefully, oh, within, okay. hopefully within the next week, if that's not doable, that's fine. Okay. But I'll lead to it with saying that the trailer or teaser trailer for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice came out in the last week. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Add Beetlejuice to your list. I mean, one, because. It's always been on the list. Yes. And it's, it's lit. It embarrasses me that I haven't seen it. This sequel is coming and you don't want to go into the sequel without having seen the original. Obviously. It's on the Um, list. I will get to it. I don't know if you've watched the trailer, but I will say, and I'm, I'm interested to know what people listening or watching thought of the trailer because it's a teaser, but I do feel like it was one of those ones that the studio kind of had no option, but to rush out because too mm. much um, tabloid footage from behind the scenes was leaking. Okay. And I yeah. think they had to sort of, you know, nip it in the bud and get something out. So I think it's yeah. a very underwhelming teaser. I don't think the music fits the motion. I think yep. what's happening in the, in, in the trailer doesn't quite sync up. Obviously there's no dialogue. It's just um, music with, Clips from the movie put together. Okay. Um, what is good about it is you can see they've recaptured the look of the original. Like it's yep. no, it just yeah. it's cut from the same material. It's um it's got Michael Keaton in the Beetlejuice get up, looks fantastic. You got Winona Ryder, uh Jenny Ortega playing the daughter of her, uh Catherine O'Hara back in character, looking oh, fantastic. Wow. Justin Thoreau's in it as Winona Ryder's um husband. Who? Justin Thoreau. Oh, okay. Yep. Who is Louis Thoreau's cousin, mind you, if you yep. playing trivia yeah. out there. Yep. Uh, and yeah, look, it looks fantastic, but the trailer is underwhelming. I'm looking forward to, um, I'm looking forward to the real trailer. Yeah. Which who knows when that's coming, but yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Do you ever find it's funny that um, Louis Thoreau calls himself Louis Thoreau and Justin Thoreau calls himself Justin Thoreau? Yep. Yep, I do. And Louis Thoreau's 
dad is Paul Thoreau. I think he says Thoreau as well, who's the author of The Mosquito Coast. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Yep. Very interesting. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, I can hear some music. Do you want to direct people to social media? <laughs> yes. Again, please go to our social media. Go to goodmoviemonday.com. Again, that's our flagship um, podcast and videos and website, everything. Um, hit the up late tab, follow the links, and you'll find us. And yeah. all of other Good Movie Monday stuff as well. So definitely go and hit us up there. Um, and uh, pretty sure we're coming to you in-house. Next I know. Week. Next week is our monthly, um, what are we calling it? Like, it's not a live episode as in it's live in the moment, but it no. is live at the desk. We are together. We're at the desk. We are at the desk next week. I am yep. super pumped about it. It's um, it's a great little space and I cannot wait to hang out with you. Oh, me too. Back at Inspire 9. So please join us next week for that. It's going to be fantastic. Please um, do. I've got hopefully else. I have watched Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll wait and see, won't we? Beetlejuice, Thanks, Beetlejuice, man. Beetlejuice! Oh, don't. She said it. We're all I'll, fucked. I'll undo the curse by saying flugelhorn, flugelhorn, flugelhorn. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, fancy pants. See ya.